He tried to destroy you, literally, um, but it didn't work. You won and he tried to destroy you, um, just like he destroyed your neighbors, but you were too strong for him. Welcome back, everyone. It's Leah Guy with the Modern Sage podcast. Today, we are talking about my story, but in a very different way. Just to remind you, if you've missed the first couple of episodes of season four, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to those episodes. I'm telling the story of purchasing and living in a 200-year-old enchanted home, very spirit-filled for the past three and a half years, and what I did to transform that space as well as the transformation that happened in my own life. And it's a very profound, uh, mysterious and engaging story, full of fear for the first couple of years. Now today we're talking with a special guest. Her name is Barbara Bandell. In addition to being a psychic medium, she's also an author of the book called My Most Memorable Psychic Readings and Personal Stories. And Barbara's here today to have a conversation with me about just how mediumship works, how she experiences it, how I experience it, what is possible in the spirit world, how does it happen? And she even may give me a live reading, which I've never had from Barbara before. So um, stay tuned for that. Thanks for being here, Barbara. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm honored to be your guest, Leah. Ah, thank you. You are such a beautiful spirit. Right away, I knew just with your image that you have a sacred heart and you are passionate and connected and um, come at this at a very lovely, beautiful, bright vibration. So I'm glad that you're doing uh, what you're doing. Go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm just kidding. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah. blushing. And um, Barbara has not listened to the, my last couple of episodes, just full transparency, because she wanted to come at this without too much prior information, as a lot of psychic mediums do. We do not research you guys. We do not dig into your mm -hmm. social media and your backgrounds. We don't do a background check. The, the less we know, the better. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to just know your experience of what it is to communicate yeah. in the spirit world. It's heaven. Yes. It's, 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 um, I think that's why I love this work so much because there is unconditional love and we hardly find that on earth. So it's, uh, all is good. All is positive. They're honest. Um, but all with, with loving guidance. And it's just heaven to like a warm blanket. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm giving readings, actually, I get so overwhelmed with yeah. emotion and it's yeah. so beautiful to be in that connection. Yeah. I, you know, I, I come out of the session and I have mascara dripping down my face and I've been crying and I'm just, it's the, the most heart opening, pure, delightful, peaceful, beautiful experience of my life for, for certain. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree. The work of mediumship and spirit communication is not fear-based. It is the total opposite of that. So Barbara, I went through an experience at this house that yeah. um, was, wow, it was so transformative. Mm -hmm. There was equal positive, harmonious light beings there as there was this ominous, dark, heavy invasive energy there yeah and it took me wow. a couple of years mm -hmm. one to piece together the story i came to learn this amazing story that happened at that house and and just you know deep transformation i don't want to spoil the story because i've only mm -hmm. we're only part way in it but that whole experience wow. for me it was filled with fear at the beginning Yes, of course. But I, yes, I stayed. I stayed in myself, and I stayed in the trust and the and the light and the knowingness that I was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to say that going through that, and I won't call it a dark night of the soul, but it was mm -hmm. there was definitely a lot of um, heavy stuff there that yeah. deepened my ability to yeah communicate, trust, uh, literally create force fields and and that kind of thing. Yeah, so I'm eternally grateful for it. I think, I don't know if you agree, but I also believe that, like you say, it deepens 
it deepens our awareness about there's light and there's darkness and also to believe in in the good that we are um yeah they're trying to teach us this is darkness this is how it feels but i think your story has definitely more and more layers ultimately in the transformation wow. of it all i came to really appreciate the lessons of the darkness the germination yeah. of power in the darkness and the necessity of the darkness and i don't mean that in the sense of you know the attacks or the the hard negative ugly stuff but mm -hmm. let's face it that stuff is part of living and it's part of yeah. our limited consciousness here and so forth but yeah. but it really did um it really changed my relationship to my own past and my own yeah darkness That's and beautiful. It did, yeah it deepened my understanding of people and compassion for those yeah. who have suffered much exactly and i also feel that uh, i don't know how old your your house is do you know how old it is um almost 200 years okay uh, because i feel the people who live in your house it's like you heal them too because they couldn't do what you do right now so you heal that too and that's beautiful yeah i definitely feel like i was called to that place yeah or called back you know there was such a familiarity with that space and that house yeah. land for me it's very easy to be to be unsensitized to not pay attention to where mm -hmm. we are and what we're doing and why we're here yeah and we we chalk so much up to this, you know, mystery or or like it's bizarre that we have memory of things past or that we have coincidences or that we have deja vu. Mm -hmm. And I think if we if we can tune in a little deeper within ourselves and remember just that that act of a deeper remembering of. Yeah. of who we are of what we're connected to of the land of the history of you know, everything everything yeah. so tell me uh, tell us a little bit about how you do your mediumship or how you do your psychic mediumship what's the process for you when i gave a reading um uh, like we said in the beginning i don't want to know anything about my clients and i uh, close my eyes usually and i focus on their energy it can be their voice or a photo. And then I listen to what my guides say, uh, what they show me, what they uh, let me feel. Sometimes I smell things. And then I repeat. And my my readings are usually three to five years into the future. It, it's about everything, your past lives, who's around you, people uh, who want to connect with you from the other side. I just love it so much. It's still just, and also, Leah, because I'm not there. When I'm giving a reading, I'm not there. And that's so refreshing yeah. to just have no ego. And my opinion doesn't matter. It's all about being the tool for the guides. And oh, that gives me so much joy. Yeah, yeah. it is. There's, there's a, a freedom that happens during the readings. I feel yeah. that too. It's like going on a vacation. This, kind of turning yeah. off self and entering into yeah. this other world and just listening and sharing and saying that sometimes we have to share things that are difficult that are oh yes what people want to hear we have to tell them uh we have to tell them but the beauty of a reading is that the guides explain why your life will go in a different direction than you want to and that's better than what you hoped for how long yeah. have you been doing this work 40 years it's always been with me and i tried to live a normal life but it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> a normal life i couldn't imagine uh, not giving readings or not being connected with the guides i just couldn't imagine that i wanted to ask you about your experience with free with free will yeah in my experience with readings i definitely hear what's highest and best for the client but then i recognize that a lot of times the client doesn't take spirit's advice whether yeah. they don't trust me or they don't trust the reading or they don't trust spirit and they go a completely different direction and then they go well yeah. what happened to xyz yeah i think it's important that we all remember that 
that we do have free will and that the choices yeah. that we make are important. Yes, and um, you can take another um, uh, route, but I, I think maybe it will take them longer. The things you said, they will happen, but it will take them longer. The advice that we give is often seen as too simple. Mm -hmm. Do this and, and it will go better. So... <laughs> I sometimes have the feeling that people want it difficult. They want a difficult solution, but often it's really simple. That's kind of what the whole book is about, about I write about emotional addiction and how we create our own suffering a lot of times by because yeah. we're addicted to pain, we're addicted to our wounded state, our very low vibrational state of being. Yeah. And so we perpetuate the self-sabotage and the suffering and when spirit comes in for these readings and for communication, it's not interested in self-sabotage and punishment. No, it's, not at all. Right? Yeah. Listen to Leah, everybody, and do what she says. <laughs> That's my advice. Listen yeah. to Barbara. <laughs> and I, I always say um, my readings are like 90% the um, most possible outcome. And the 10% is free will. But it may take a while because for for the guides, a year is nothing. It's just like the, the turn of a page for us when we read a book. Often people do have to have patience and that's difficult. Why don't we give a sample? Are you up for a sample reading for the listeners? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. It's very crowded in your room. Your, your, your main spirit guide is a man and there's... They're so funny. But your main spirit guide is a man. And then I see three of your healing guides around you. And they are in light blue. Light blue with golden um, like rays. So they have big plans for you, Leah. Are you ready? Yes. This is for the next three to five years. When you were 45, I don't know. I, I really can't tell how young you are. I don't know because I feel your soul. So for me, you're thousands of years young. Um, but 45 is a very uh, milestone year for you because that's when your big shift started. And a big shift never happens like from Monday to Tuesday. It goes gradually. That's when you really uh, started to grow. But what they want to do with you is I see you in front of an audience and I feel a, a, a woman. She, it's not family. She, I think she's a friend or someone you trust and she will help you with all the organization things you don't want people in your house anymore you're done with that somehow it doesn't feel good for you anymore um so online is fine but you i do see you uh in front of an audience and people are like they're listening breathless to what you you have to say and then of course um we have all the things you're doing, because I have the feeling this is your last life. Yay! You don't have to return anymore. I really think this is your last life. And um, many times people say, "Oh, do I have a native, um, a Native American as a guide?" And I often have to uh, say no. But with you, I feel a lot of Native Americans around you. They adore you. They love you. you. You're one of them. Are you ready for the new book? Are you ready for your new book? And that also involves children. You're going to work more with children because a lot of young ones are uh, very psychic. You're going to travel as well. Um, I also see Europe. You have a strong connection with Italy. Italy is where you had a couple of very happy lifetimes. But you're going, I think you're going to do a tour. Mm -hmm. Talking about your books, educating people, and it will come to you. You don't have to do anything. It just comes to you, the invitation. And I think you're going to pee your pants, but don't because it's, it's, People love to hear you talk. You have so much wisdom. And there's also something with an alphabet you're going to write. Maybe the herbs or maybe illnesses, but you're going to use an alphabet. Janie, that's her name, Janie. Sorry, Janice. Sorry, it's Janice. I'm sorry. 
So she will be in your life and she will do a lot of things for you, uh, making uh, the bookings and making sure that everything's all right. So you have to cut down on certain things you do. Your healing, it's incredible. It's, it's incredible. You're scary, scary good with your healing. So you, I think you will also do a part of healing people in the audience all together, like a bunch. I want to validate and confirm that um, most everything that you said, I know what you're talking about. I don't think I know this Janice woman yet. Is that correct? The Janice. No, you don't know her yet. Yeah. So, yeah sorry, I didn't okay. mention that. That's okay. So I'll let you all know about that. Um, but as many of you know, um, I will. I've been working on a one-woman show. I've written a speech. I went to a public speaking school. I do a lot of teaching and on stage, and that is the focus of the direction that I'm going in. So that feels accurate. I just was reached out to, from a company in Poland wanting me to come to Poland to wow. teach next year or so. So maybe that's the start of this international. Oh, yes. Tour. Um, so I, I resonate with most of everything you said. Great. A couple of questions I have for you. I wrote a screenplay in addition to the one woman show that I need to start pitching. And I'm curious if the movie is going to get made about the story of the house and the healing. Yes, 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 yes. I can see a woman. She's playing you. And, um, oh, I, she, she's a very well-known actress. And she loves to play you. It's now 2023, almost 24. 2025, then there will be progress with the movie. So maybe someone bought the script or uh, maybe the filming starts, but 2025 is, uh, is being mentioned. So yeah, oh, wow. But there will also be a series if you want to. So maybe um, a documentary and then a movie and a documentary. Uh, don't take the first offer, they're saying. Don't take the first offer. Yeah, don't take the first offer. But you will get there. Oh. Oh, let me know. I'm going to, I want to watch it, of course. Okay. General, so back to the house. I just want to make sure the house is in, in as good a shape as I think it is energetically yeah. and is I, that I'm making the right decision. Although I, I know that I am, but what is your take on that? Yeah. Yes, you are making the right decision, but um, do you want your house in the movie? Yes. Is that the, because... It will be, I see people buying a ticket and then, oh, we're in this house from the movie. Oh, that's scary when you're literally in the house. So it's going to be like, um, um, what's the name? What's the word for a theme park? Oh. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> people can buy, them. yeah, they can buy tickets and then visit the house. That's <laughs> what's going to happen. Yeah. And I feel in your house, it's um, like every room takes you to, to another, through another story, like another energy. And it's good. It's beautiful. And you can be like a whole day in your house, all about all the energies you sense there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be in the movie. It has to be. My guides are saying it has to be. And so the, um, the dark energy there is all removed, correct? Yeah, yeah. And it wants to come back. La na 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 like that. But it won't. It's it's um it's done. Right. So don't worry about that. But people will say, Oh, I felt it, but that's not true. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, you you know, there's still plenty of energy at the house. It's just mm -hmm. that particular I've named that energy Edward in the movie. So that energy is not there anymore. It's <laughs> nice for all the Edwards out there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a sort of demon in the house and we called it Edward. Um, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. But more the people who are going to uh, buy a ticket, they think they feel Edward, but it's gone. Well, just the other night I was staying there and I definitely heard spirit again in the house that I haven't heard in a while. It wasn't scary though at all. So that's, that's good. I think I'm making the right decisions with the house. 
you do and the house was waiting for you such a long time so talking about patience i think that um edward can i can i call him edward too yes. because it's your edward edward was not long after the house was built he was there so the house had to wait a long time for you yeah when you mentioned poland my guide said and the uk the UK people in the uh, England, they're going to love you, the United Kingdom. When you were working, oh, wow, this feels intense. When you were working with Edward, um, he really tried to uh, mess with your health, with your energy level and with your skin. And um, did you have a lot of rashes when you worked with Edward? Blah. Oh, that's horrible. I did. Well, and actually, I still get them from time to time, but they're less. And I'm yeah. um, trying to walk a balance of letting things express themselves to get out of my system and also yeah. not being sick all the time. I started with rashes um, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they will leave. Don't worry, they will leave. And imagine how strong you are when he tried to destroy you literally um but it didn't work i feel when you're traveling to to europe uh it's you you're stronger than you're now so everything will be better for you uh in terms of health wise you're gonna uh, float like flow when you're when you're on stage you're not walking you're floating mm -hmm. it's so beautiful to see so spring, they're talking about spring. Yeah, you will have like a burst of inspiration around January. It's like, and then everything just flows and a lot of interaction with the audience and they love that. Yeah, you know exactly who to choose. Do you want people to come on stage and... I don't know yet. Well, I see people coming on stage and you're asking them questions and they're nervous, they're laughing and you're, you make them feel at ease. So what's the name of the movie? Right now it's called Obsidian. Oh, oh, that has a ring to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that feels good. And, and my one woman show is called The Light Night of the Soul. Beautiful. I think the first shows will be um, already booked. Like every show will be booked. And then people want you to come back to, to, the, to the same cities. It will be a great success. You know, I get so excited for you, like, oh, and the movie and the series and the documentary. I'm like, yay, That's we worked so hard for it. And it's time. And, you know, because a lot of films are like not true or, or they, they add things that are so weird but your story is so genuine that makes it even more intense. And that's what people want, real stories with real people. So what do you think about um, spirits that linger and pass on? Like Edward, for example, and you said he wants to come back, but he's not going to. So no. where is he? Or what do you think? What is he up to? What is he doing? Um, is there hope for those kinds of tortured souls uh, there is, but not for Edward, because he thinks he's the best soul who's ever lived. Um, and where is Edward? He's he's just try he's waiting. He can wait a long time. He's waiting for you to that there is like a crack in the door that he can come in again. But he won't. It's it's useless. But he's stubborn and he's um, stupid too. So it's useless. But he's still around the house and a little bit in the neighborhood and together with other blobs. Yeah, there's a house next to mine, which I haven't started describing in the story on the podcast yet. But I only had one neighbor and the neighbor was this couple. John is his name and Zen Cat was yeah. she went by. And they were probably early 70s and very disheveled. I didn't know the extent of their mental health issue and their addiction issues when I first met them yeah. but their, their house is like you know it had not been groomed or taken care of in years it looked you know it kind of looked scary and they looked really scary she was so out of her mind bless her heart she would talk to my house and scream at my house and and ask it questions she'd be outside naked moving down the road without any clothes no. on he would be up every morning going to get alcohol at nine o'clock and 
this couple, the only neighbors behind it is woods and so forth. They were very challenging, crazy. And they didn't have a kitchen. They didn't have a working stove. They didn't have an oven. They didn't have anything. And she was just out of her mind, but beautiful and sweet when she wasn't crazed. He was out getting alcohol. She yeah. fell on the stairs, hit her head and died. No. And he lost the rest of his mind, ended up in the hospitals and so forth. And then he ended up back at the house by himself, drinking every day. And then a year later, he ended up dying in the house when I was out of town. The house has been empty now yeah. for several months. But my inclination was that Edward or these energies were kind of bouncing off of this yeah other property and their mental illness and sickness and just yeah. had full control over there. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been interested in maybe buying that house. Not that I can right now, but there's other land properties around me. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to turn this whole hillside into um, a retreat center or a healing center yeah. or something like that? So I wonder if Edward is spending Ooh. some time. Oh yeah, he is. He's in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking I got so cold, like, oh my gosh, what a horrible story. You can, you can buy property and, and make a, a beautiful environment for, for retreats. Um, but first you have to get Edward out of the neighbor's house. And I don't think you are willing to do that at this moment because you have so many other things to do. So, but he's waiting and um, he's sleeping a lot. He sleeps a lot, Edward. And then... Um, he just waits. He can never come back in your house ever. I don't feel that. Never, ever again. He's, he's trying, but it's impossible. It's impossible. And I'm happy for you because my gosh, you don't want that again. No. So, so when you say he can't come in the house, are you, mm -hmm. do you mean because it is so locked down spiritually with yeah. energetic protection? You, you kind of won. You won and he tried to destroy you. Um, just like he destroyed your neighbors, but you were too strong for him. But that doesn't hold him from keep trying. But I don't see him coming into your house again. No way. But he's your new next door neighbor. Mm. Yeah, it's not very far away, that house. It's Yeah, right it's there. close. Yeah. So, but don't worry about that. And I feel a bit sorry because I feel that there will be new people living uh, living there. And I feel sorry for them because I hope they sense that they shouldn't live there because it's he will do it. He feeds on souls. That's what keeps him alive, so to say. So I, I hope nobody gets to live there. Yeah, and that you can buy it later on. Because I don't feel he's going to be in a battle with you again. When you buy that house, he's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's Leah. <laughs> Mommy, help me. <laughs> yeah, and he smells really bad. He smells like burned. He, he has a burned, rotten scent. Uh, okay, I'm, what I'm being shown now is... Um, your house the the land around your house so mm -hmm. I have to close my eyes because you have the back door in your house so I'm, I'm walking out of your back door and then I'm going slightly to the right and they um, buried people there so miscarriages they were buried right there do you know that place well I do and I'm glad that I'm glad that this episode is going to air after the one I just posted to for tomorrow because <laughs> I just revealed that there is a burial pit in my in the land. Yeah. And so it's in your backyard. That's what I'm sensing. And people were beaten to death also. So not only hanged, but beaten to death. Babies were buried there. Women women were I hear women screaming they were raped there was like um I don't know the English word like you can a lit and then you go into the ground they put the lit up and there were people there mm -hmm. like maybe to torture them or when that you were bad is that lit still in your house there's a there's a large rock over where I believe the burial pit is um, yeah and then there's another area of land too that's suspect. I'm not sure. It's a little too close to the house, so I've avoided tuning in to it. Um, okay. Directly. 
But um, I think the house was a brothel at the turn of the century. And there were yeah. a lot of young girls there abused and yeah. raped and sold. And I hear, I hear women screaming. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And um, and some of them, when they had um, their saying syphilis, when they went out of their mind, they were buried, but they put them first like animals. They, they lifted the lid and then they put them there without eating or drinking. So they died there and then they buried them. And what you just said about the other part of your house, that's safe. The burial thing is slide to the right. I'm going to the right. If you're looking at my backyard, it's to the right where the yes. rock is. And the, yes, exactly. And the rest is fine. But there was a lot of laughter too, by the way. There was a lot of fun. And I hear a piano, like an old piano, where you don't have to touch the... Um, a player piano. Yeah, like these old things in the saloons. I can hear that. And people are laughing. And so it had a lot of laughter too, thank God. Yeah. Yes, well, that's I do share that, that there was um, just as much peace and love and, you know, good feeling there when I arrived yeah. as this other formation and energy, for sure. Yeah. And it's weird how you got the house because it was really meant for you. Mm. It was really meant for you. So you, you just your guys they said whatever happens Leah has to live here they really helped you with the house to, so in order to get it will I ever live in it again though or will I just have it for I you'll just have it and then um there will be oh this is interesting there will be a house near the ocean you'll you have ocean view and it's temporarily because you'll be flying to Europe but you just want somewhere where you can look at the ocean that's very important. We'll be very happy in that house near the ocean. It's so peaceful and so spiritual as well. <clears throat> you have your own office there. And I hear the phone constantly ringing. ringing. I can hear that, that woman who's going to help you picking up the phone, uh, helping you because she wants to keep everything away from you so that you can focus on the documentary, on the film, on your shows um in front of audiences and it's it's you you can do this for the rest of your life if you want to the the one woman show oh wow yeah because people you're going to add so much because you get so much love from the audience that you sense things that you want to add into your next show i want to thank you for your not just your time but your heart your passion, your soul, you're living your purpose fully. It's yeah. its just so, so beautiful to see you work and how uh, you are. So thank you. You're welcome. You're so welcome. And it was my pleasure to give you a reading. And it was really weird, all the weird things that happened at the beginning with the electricity on my side and on your side. But I think it's just too much our energies together like whoa <laughs> i know we got on here and then her her internet um crashed essentially she had to reboot her router and everything my microphone crashed my phone demagnetized the <laughs> something else happened it was just wild oh, yeah. all within 10 minutes so so barbara are you going to write another book i think so i don't know when but um the guide said yes we're going to write another book with you okay, okay. Well, yeah, well, I look forward to reading the book that you already have, which again, just to remind uh, listeners is my most memorable psychic readings and personal stories. Um, Barbara is in the Netherlands. And she is available for private readings. Um, I'll have all of her information in the show notes on the screen. And of course, we'll link up on social media so you can all follow each other um, there. Barbara, thank you again so much. Thank you for all your uh, help with other people and please let me know when the movie comes out and the documentary and when you're here in the europe because i'll be front row okay <laughs> i will be yeah of course and to everyone Thank else you. have a beautiful day and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast leave a review or a rating it helps the algorithm find us it also helps inform other potential listeners so if this has been helpful inspiring or motivational for you, then please let us know about that. Have a wonderful day and you will hear from me next week on the Modern Sage Podcast.